New Zealand's highest and most spectacular geyser. Pahutu shoots boiling water and steam 30 metres into the air and it can do this up to 14 or 15 times a day. It's a geyser, but how does it work? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, the explanation starts with a teaspoon of water, boiling water. As that water boils, it changes into the equivalent of 600 teaspoons of steam. So there's an enormous increase in volume, but you don't notice anything much because the teaspoon, of course, is quite open and the steam just mixes with the air around it. However, if you have a closed vessel or partially closed, such as a kettle, when the water inside that boils, you see some action because there is a smaller opening for the steam to issue, the spout, and so this steam issues up into the air. Some of it condenses to form a cloud and it looks quite spectacular. In fact, it looks a little bit like the steam vents that you see around Rotorua. Now, what would happen if you were boiling water in a completely closed vessel? You'd get an enormous increase in pressure and it could be quite dangerous. Well, believe it or not, espresso coffee machines use a sealed container of water. You see, what you do is pour some water in the container itself. There are all sorts of knobs and, and uh, taps and things on it. These are those marvellous machines that make those noises when the coffee is being brewed. So the first thing you need to do is to top it all the way up with water. So I'll pour some water in the back. It's already about half full. Top it up and then it'll be ready to go. But before you switch it on and it has an electrical heating element, you put a lid on it which has a rubber seal, which you can see in there. So it makes it quite airtight. So I screw that in position. There's another tap on the side, make sure that's closed. Now any boiling water that issues will come out from underneath here and it'll be forced through some ground coffee in this little container here. So I'll lock that in position. The other little spout is for steam, that's to froth the milk. Now we put the little jug underneath there and switch the whole thing on and already it's starting to heat that water. Now we can't see inside it but if we could we'd see something like this. A sealed container which now has the lid firmly in place, so we'll indicate that across there. Rubber seal so no steam can, can escape. There's water in here and the water is boiling, so you're getting steam building up here. Now the steam would normally issue through this side opening here, but there's a tap on that, so it can't issue yet. When it does, at the end, when it's boiling, you can actually make the steam issue out here and use that to froth the milk. But what happens, of course, is that you're getting a build-up of pressure here, so that the water is forced to go the only way it can go, which is out through this opening here, and down through the coffee grounds there, and it'll drip into the little cup or jug there, making your espresso coffee, which is absolutely delicious. Well, it takes a couple of minutes, but I think from the sounds of things, it's almost at that position now. Look at that. Boiling water under pressure is being forced down through the coffee into the jug, forming espresso coffee. And if we want to froth the milk to make cappuccino, we put the milk up here so that the nozzle goes beneath the surface and open this tap and steam comes out. And froths the milk, which you can then pour into your espresso to make cappuccino. Now, you might say that's all very interesting, but what's it got to do with the geyser? Surprisingly enough, it is very similar to what's happening under the surface of the ground when you see a geyser at a place like Rotorua. Now here's the under the ground picture of a fumarole and a geyser. Now a fumarole is just a steam vent and what happens with that is it's very much like a kettle. There's very hot water seeping into a space under the ground and it's hot, the water's hot because rocks are scraping over each other causing friction and increasing the temperature of the water and if that's heated so much that it boils, the steam will simply issue through an opening at the top. It's a steam vent or a fumarole, just like a kettle. Now a geyser is a little bit different. There's a chamber under the ground, a space, but it doesn't have a direct opening from the top to the surface. It does have an opening from the side, down low. 
Now what happens of course is if the water is heating up under the ground and you're getting steam in this position here, what will happen to it? Well, just as in the espresso coffee machine, you're going to build pressure up and up and up until it builds up so much that it forces down on the surface of the boiling water. It has only one place to go. The boiling water must come up this little spout at the side between the rocks and spurt out the top. So you get issuing from the top boiling water and steam. And that'll keep taking place until the water level is pushed right down to this level here. Then the whole thing will stop and it won't go again until the hole under the ground fills up with hot water once again. So it's intermittent, it comes and goes. And as in the case of Pahutu, it may be as many as 15 times a day. So now you know how geysers work, all because of the espresso coffee machine. I'm not afraid to